Welcome back to Your Average Witch, where every Tuesday we talk about witch life, witch stories, and sometimes a little witchcraft. Your Average Witch is brought to you by Crepuscular Conjuration. In this episode, I'm talking to Amber of Ambling Witchcraft. We talked about how to be the best you. Amber gives some advice to new witches and talks about how you can safely do shadow work. Before we get started, I want to remind you that Anahata's Purpose is coming up fast. If you've been listening for very long at all, you've probably heard me talk about Anahata's Purpose. It is the life-changing, that sounds so cornball, but it did actually change my life, spiritual retreat in just outside Philadelphia. It happens from the 5th to the 8th of September this year. Tickets are on sale now. They are still available. You can still come hang out and cry in the river with me if you want to. I probably won't be crying this year. Maybe I have my shit together. I will be teaching a class called Intuitive Spellcrafting with Grandpa Kimothy. And Witch Bitch Amateur Hour will be there this year doing a live show with two Geminis and a Leo. There is a call and response event on Thursday night called The Show, run by Corey's Cauldron. There's a lot happening, and you're going to miss out if you aren't there. You'll want to be there. Buy a ticket. Come see us at Anahata's Purpose. It is my favorite part of the year, any year, all year. You can buy your ticket at anahatuspurpose.com. Now let's get to the story. Amber, hello. Welcome back. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for making another appearance. (laughs) (laughs) Can you please let everybody know who you are and what you do and where they can find you? Absolutely. Um, I am Amber. I uh, have amblingwitchcraft.com. You can also find me at amblingwitchcraft wherever you get your dose of social media. Um, I am a stay-at-home parrot, uh, an ambling witch, uh, the word is very intentional, and a blogger. Cool. Also, we're friends. And we're friends. (laughs) Can you tell me what it means when you call yourself a witch? Uh, So to me, being a witch is being a scholar and a witness to the world how it actually is and not how others tell you it should be. Um, we're here to learn and grow and help. Uh, so I call myself a witch because I'm a helper and a knowledge seeker. I like that one. That's new. <laughs> Yay. I like being new. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell people your nickname? Absolutely. Okay. In our group, we call Amber Teddy Ted Talk because she educates us. (laughs) And it's great. It is. Yes. (laughs) She's much appreciated. And often when there's like discussion about whatever, usually psych stuff, um, I I think, I hope Amber comes in here soon. (laughs) Oh, you have a super niche question about a super niche topic? Let me show up with five books, two websites, and a podcast about it. That's why you should visit her website, because you can benefit. (laughs) Just like we do. (laughs) Do you have any family history with witchcraft? So I just talked to my mom about this yesterday. I, yeah, (laughs) I grew up believing that uh, we didn't have any family witch or family history of witchcraft that we were all very very church people and yesterday i learned that i was wrong that while my family (laughs) um my family is definitely very very church people but i'm from a long line of psychics um my mom calls them earth women she says it's closest to hedge witchery and she actually gave me a picture of my great grandma Nona, which is my mother's mother's mom. That's a long list. Um, who was 
from Scotland and who would work with herbs and like would heal others. And like her default was to go into her garden and make a tincture for somebody um, and was also the wife of a Southern Baptist preacher. That's cool. So, yeah, I was just like mind blown. And when I turned him, I was like, so I just went back to my roots. She's like, yeah, yeah, you did. Did so. she mind? <laughs> no. So, I don't know how my family uh, feels it about it. <laughs> um, it actually makes a lot of sense when my mom wasn't freaked out when I would just know things as a kid. She likes to tell a story about when I was like five or six. And this is in the 90s. So there's no cell phones. And my mother turns to me and says, hey, where's your oldest sister? I was like, oh, she's out with her boyfriend and she'll be home at 543. And sure enough, that was the time my sister walked in the front door. So hmm. she uh, apparently used me as a tracker app for my elder siblings. <laughs> That's sus, mom. <laughs> yeah super <laughs> sus so yeah <laughs> can you introduce us to your practice anything you do regularly or consistently so oh yeah all right <laughs> i <laughs> i call myself an ambling witch because i need a gentle approach to the craft because too much structure makes me nauseous and uh not enough structure means nothing happens so i uh consistently have a microburst of magic that i do every day i learn to integrate it so thoroughly in my routine that i forget i'm doing it which is also fun um so consistently I stir my coffee a specific way, begging the beans to give me energy and patience for the day. I always stir my food a specific direction, either clockwise to bring things in or counterclockwise to send things out. Uh, to the point where now that's how my husband cooks things, my muggle husband, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I, I made the decision once to figure out what I was going to honor every day of the week as far as runes go or deities go. And so I try to light a candle every day with that rune or that deity in mind. But other than that, shake your ass for Jupiter is really the only consistent practice that I do <laughs> because object permanence issues is a thing. Me too. Why, why <laughs> did that become the only thing we all do? <laughs> because it's so much fun and it's so easy. And every Thursday, my house gets a house cleansing using my Amazon Alexa. It's like, why not? It's just interesting that we all do that. Still, like that's the one thing we all do. That's cool. It's people it's are weird. We're a coven. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. How would you say witchcraft changed your life? Oh, I'm more confident. Um. I feel like who I am, unless like life is happening to a thing that I happen to be a part of, uh, it adds color and kaleidoscope of experiences to me. It brings peace. Like 2020 is when I really came into the craft, like many of us. Um, but it helped me give actionable things that I could do to influence my life when so much was out of my control. So it's... It helped me find who I am outside of the context of what everybody expects me to be. Good one. That's good. Cool. Thanks, what I didn't the... even try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. <laughs> What's the biggest motivator in your practice? And has it changed since you first started? I don't know if it's changed since I first started, but also I can't remember that far back. Um, <laughs> but the biggest motivator is I get to be the favorite version of me. Um, I get to be a happy, stable, connected mom to my kids, loving, animated, peaceful wife to my husband. I get a version of myself that's authentic. Um, that That's a big motivator for me is, is it drives me to finding the my favorite version of me maybe not the best version of me but the version of me that I love the most because 
I get to help and I get to be loving and kind and knowledgeable and come to people with solutions when they ask for it and comfort when they don't. And I just burst out of a pile of books and start providing references as mentioned earlier. And it's just, <laughs> that's, it's just my favorite me. And so that that's my motivators. I get to still be that every day, no matter the context. You don't think that's the best you? Because it seems like you changed your mind when, immediately after you said that word. <laughs> so when I think of the word the best version of you, I think of toxic positivity spaces online. Okay, that's where fair. You Never mind. The most productive it. self. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I thought you were being, that would be the best version of you to me is what you described that the reason you like it. Absolutely. I'm just using a terminology shift because be your best self has been a marketing campaign for people who want you to make them money. Okay. That's fair. Yes. And my best self But I'm just telling you profitable? that I think your best self is the one that you described. <laughs> yes. Yep. My favorite self is my best self because it's my the goodest self. one. Like, like the dogs. The it's the goodest self. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's your biggest struggle when it comes to your practice? Oh, uh consistency. <laughs> um my husband has me in his phone as inconsistent muffin, aka de boss. <laughs> and uh I-, I never know from one day to the next how much energy I'm going to have to put towards the things that are important to me. It's as much of a mystery to me as it is to everybody else. And so finding ways to consistently engage in witchcraft and not just immediately go to the mundane solution, which is fine. But sometimes the witchcraft solution to a problem is so much more fun and fulfilling than the mundane one. Like cleaning your house. Yes, you have to do mundane actions to do that. But it's more fun if you also blast dance music in the background to get the icky energy out at the same time so remembering to do that part of it and being consistent with that is the biggest struggle that i have do you also have imposter syndrome oh what hell do you do yeah about it if you do <laughs> yeah imposter syndrome is basically my middle name it's oh, great. good <laughs> i'll make a note <laughs> Um, often I just summon the goddess Nike and just do it. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she personifies victory, right? Um, in any field, including art, music, athletics, war, if you must. Uh, but it's like, sometimes you just got to white knuckle through it and just be like, I'm going to do it anyway. And also I get the opportunity to fool them all when I do. Like, if I don't belong here, then I'm going to trick everybody into believing that I do. And just be the master of disguise. Um, Too bad for you for being stupid. <laughs> you should have exactly. caught me. <laughs> That's a good one. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's half white knuckling it through life and half reminding myself of the badass things that I've already accomplished. Like helping manifest houses for friends or making a bomb that helps my my husband's nerve pain and putting runes on it to make it even better bomb like, with an l people yes 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 bomb uh because i heard the other, the other one, one first and i thought hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't I tell mean, me about a, the bomb <laughs> it is a permanent solution i'm not gonna lie uh a solve how's that uh, <laughs> Before I interrupted you making jokes, did you finish your thought? I don't remember. <laughs> Damn it. I was just very startled when you said it. No, it's 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 fine. It's it's very much just the uh I'm gonna show up anyway. <laughs> and then if that doesn't work, I'm gonna remind myself why I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. What's something you did early on in your practice that you don't do anymore, and why don't you do it? Oh, boy. When I first started, every moon 
every day, every planet correspondence, every cosmic event, I was like, I am all over this, like white on rice on a paper plate in a snowstorm. I'm going to do all of it all the time. And it was just so much like I was I was having meltdowns. I was overwhelmed. There's too much information. Um, And my brain doesn't like to wait for the right moon to do a ritual. It doesn't want to wait for the correct day. I don't have time for that. I don't have attention span for that. And so now, (laughs) instead of letting the cosmos decide when I have the time and the energy, I just summon the essence of the moon cycle I need on whatever day of the week I happen to do this on and think of the cosmic event that I think would be helpful, like an eclipse or a planet alignment, and just put that essence into it. Instead of getting so caught up in the details, I started getting caught up in the moment. That's cool. I try. (laughs) What is your favorite tool? It does not have to be a physical object. At the risk of sounding arrogant, myself. I think I I need more people to say that. (laughs) I'm always wherever I am. I always have me. I always will have me. I can't, like, even if I break something on me, I'm still me as a whole thing. Unlike if you snap a wand in half, now you have two pieces of wood, right? Like... I have thingamabobs aplenty, don't get me wrong, but I only remember to charge me under the moons. I only remember to put me out in the storms. Like, I love playing with wands and cards and, you know, I have a gazillion candles around my house, but I'm me all of the time. So I'm my favorite tool and I use me to think of and manifest and do all of that other fun stuff. Plus, I'm free. Hey. Paid for me. <laughs> <laughs> Besides groceries and like cost of living, I don't cost money. Just great. I am very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you're half robot. Let's be clear. <laughs> And a Taurus. <laughs> How do you pull yourself out of a magical slump or other slump? I'm actually working through that right now. Um, those in the Marco group have kind of seen me come in and out dealing with that. And I have learned my overachieving, it has to be done now, 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 efficient self has learned <laughs> that rest grace and a little defiance is necessary um to avoid staying in burnout because i just want to jump back in and just be like i'm gonna do all the things and i'm gonna be great i'm gonna get back to the pinnacle of my success and then i immediately burn out again because i didn't give myself enough time so i start focusing on my mundane needs taking my vitamins eating a semi-nutritious balanced diet Uh, there's still potato chips in there because potatoes but like i start taking care of my body and then once i start taking care of that and then taking care of my environment i can focus on my magical needs because honestly it's it's got to be part of the secondary but really if you're not okay your magic's not going to be okay So to get out of a slump, I just, I'm nice to myself, which is really hard for my Leo Virgo Leo. (laughs) Uh, Mm -hmm. But it it starts with that. It starts with mental health. It starts with physical health. And then you can go from there and then do all the fun witchy shit. What brings you the most joy in your practice? Oh, the most joy. (sighs) That's hard because there's a lot. Um, But I got to say sharing it, sharing it with my son, sharing it with my family, being able to see how my actions influence the things around me in a positive way. Candles. Um, (laughs) I love candles. I'm so prepared for power outages. It's ridiculous. But like being able to set the ambience of a room and then have 
people who have no idea walk into that room and just instantly feel better. Oh, I have such Freud and Freud over that. Hmm. What is something you wish was discussed more in the witch community? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yay! Uh, (laughs) I've said this many times. I will say this many times again. Shadow work is a psychological process created by Carl Jung and should be done with the help of a mental health professional, not some random Insta blogger lady. Please. Like, it's it's not just this something that's cool to say stuff. It's important, but it's deep. It's heavy. It brings up trauma. You need to do that with the support of a community and a support of an actual professional who knows what they're doing so that you don't fall off a cliff. I love you too much to let you fall off that cliff. Witchcraft and the esoteric community very much stuck to shadow work because it's all intertwined, because it might as well be spicy psychology magic, but that's okay. There has to be guardrails. Don't just read it in a book or read it on a website or see it on Instagram and jump into it. It's not safe to do it that way. Please, for the love of God, go to therapy. That's my first rant. Uh, I did. <laughs> yeah. Secondly, and this is this is another big one I see, while I love me a good herbal remedy, stop telling people not to take their Lexapro, man. Like Jesus Christ, take your psych meds. Take your medication, take your, ibuprofen. Like, whatever else you need to take, take it. Magic 100- isn't gonna help my insulin. Exactly. Alchemists, also known as scientists, created medicine. It's just alchemy that is sanctioned by the government. Like, we love to see it. (laughs) Yes, diffuse your lavender. Yes, you can use your peppermint oil if you're not allergic. But please, take your pills. Take your medicine. Listen to your doctor. Especially if you got a good one. Please listen to them. Like, in tandem with, not in lieu of. And that's that's the two biggest things that I see, especially with the newbies and especially when you see those not so kind hearted individuals trying to sell you something on the Internet being like, do your shadow work and buy this herbal remedy. No, go to therapy. Listen to your doctors. (laughs) Maybe integrate some nice herbal tea to help with your period cramps like that's cool. But like not all or nothing. There's 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 space for both. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a platform to yell about that. <laughs> top of the rooftops, the highest the term mountain man. Strident came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a hill that I'm I willing proof, to die though. on. <laughs> Good, me too. <laughs> Think about the three biggest influences on your practice, whether it's people or books or theories or a a piece of music you heard once thank them for the influence (laughs) they have on your practice absolutely uh so the first one is a book called the sorcerer's companion which is a guide to the magical world of harry potter uh it originally came out in 2001 when i was 11 and it was my first real introduction to magic like numerology and arithmacy and um you know, astrology. Like it was the first time anybody had given me a book where that made sense. And it has references in the back. So it's not like this whole made up thing. And it's not just from the Harry Potter world, but they like, it gave me my first book list of what to go look up for. So I think that book for making okay to learn about magic and magical creatures and to tell me I wasn't crazy And I'm grateful and still refer to its pages. I still have the original copy I got when I was 11 and all of its torn page highlighted glory. The second is a person. And um, it's my mom. She gave me my first tarot deck when I was seven. She talked to me about the ghost happenings in our house growing up and never made me feel ashamed of my psychic inclinations. She always encouraged me when I started down this path 
and showed her support in both big and small ways. Even before I came out of the broom closet, she would start gifting me like chakra stones and like tree of life, like light catchers. And she was like hinting that she knew. So I thank my mom. Thank you for your gentle guidance and showing of love um, and helping me feel confident in my path forward and that you would be walking it with me. That makes me like your mom more. Not that I dislike <laughs> her, but wow. Yeah. She, is, she was super great. And mind you, we were still going to Methodist church when I was seven. And she was just like, you could learn tarot. Are you Here, interested you in this. runes? <laughs> yes, exactly. And then finally, and this is shameless, and you're going to you're gonna cry. Uh, <laughs> maybe. So the Witch Bitch Amateur Hour and Crepuscular Conjurations, your average witch podcast specifically, uh, was something that really helped me learn in a fun way. Getting that box every month from you, Kim, in the mail from somebody who lived in the same place as me. Oh my goodness. I don't have access to pine trees. It's the desert, but I have river stones from the wash outside your house with rooms carved in it. Like, it was the first time in 20 some odd years of living here that I actually felt connected to here because of the magic you put in those boxes. And how it aligned with what I learned from Waba and how it aligned from what I learned from all the witches you've had on your podcast. And so it's a little bit of a conglomeration of all of these things, but especially you coming into my life at the very beginning was like, I could do something with this and you connecting me to the land that we live on. It's glee. I have sheer glee over this. So thank you for existing in my life as a whole. You've caught me on a good day. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but, but that you makes want me to. really happy. <laughs> Aww. It's all your fault, Kim. That's weird. That's super weird. <laughs> Good, I'm weird, dumb. So. How can I have an influence on people? <laughs> <laughs> you, you've you told me it's okay to be my full authentic self every single day I've ever interacted good. with you. That and in the boxes good. and the spells you write, like, you're one of my favorite people. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to the zoo. <laughs> yes, absolutely. When it's not the sun outside. <laughs> what advice do you have for new witches? Pick one thing. Just one thing that you want to apply. There is a gazillion things you can choose from. But start with something that excites you, that you're drawn to, that interests you. And get good at that one thing. Just kind of focus on that one thing. And make a list of the other things that you discover along the way that you want to research later. And once you feel like you've kind of gotten it down, like say you pick tarot and you feel like, okay, I've really gotten tarot down. I feel confident at tarot. Then explore the runes. Then explore astrology. Then pick something else. There is such a feeling in the wide world of the internet that you have to know everything about everything or you have to be into all of it and you don't just pick one make that your special interest and make a list of the other stuff you want to explore later and don't let the fear of missing out make you overwhelmed find a best friend who's made it something else their niche interest if you're doing tarot find somebody who loves astrology and talk about it but let them kind of tell you about it so you can learn while focusing on what you're doing. Your interest can change. You might start in tarot and be like, this isn't for me. Great. Stop researching tarot. Pick something else from the list. But don't try to boil the ocean. You will go insane. Take it from me. I went completely crazy. Uh, <laughs> hmm. And then I didn't want to do any of it because there was too much. So just pick a major. Maybe also a minor, just like in college. And and just focus on those for a while. 
until you feel like you can add something else. That would be my biggest advice. Who do you think I should have on the show? Sherry Dillard. <laughs> with she, an uh, S or a C? I'm currently... Uh, with an S. S-H. Okay. She, she um, has a psychology degree and is a medium. She's wrote Ooh. the book You Are a Medium along with 11 other books. And the way that she writes, she just sounds like a lovely and wonderful person. And I would love to hear her thoughts. Me too. Now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about? Or did you have any questions for me? Do you have anything going on on your website? Um. Well, it would be remiss of me to not mention that it's Leo season. Uh, it's coming up. I turned 34 on the 25th of July. So happy birthday, me. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to remind everyone that fire energy can be healing as just as much as it can be destructive. So as we build up to the political nightmare that is our country, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> harness the fire of the season, hold on to it as you may need it to burn the weeds from your path, burn bridges that no longer serve and to warm you in the coming winter months. This is a good time to catch it in a jar or carve it in a candle and just hold on to it till you need it. Um, and yeah, that, that's really, I just want to call it, it's, it's time for fire and Lionsgate is on the 8th of August and don't let it run you over, babes. Good. Great. (laughs) (laughs) I'm feeling positive now. (laughs) Capture the fire. Keep the fire as a pet. That's what candles are. It's keeping fire as pets. You'll do great. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Last two things. Thing number one, please recommend something to the listeners. Besides therapy? Um... <laughs> I was thinking that's what Let's you were going to say. It's what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Please go to therapy. Go to support groups. All of that stuff. But if you really really want something fun it's gonna take me a minute give me a second (laughs) learn about mushrooms (laughs) the magical mystical world of mushrooms look them up see what their meanings are learn the folklore mushrooms are cute and adorable and wonderful so i would recommend mushrooms of all varieties Did you see the sound spike when I laughed? That is going to ruin my editing. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the last thing is, please tell me a story. Okay. So. I instantly forgot every funny moment in my life up until this point except for one (laughs) (laughs) and uh a lot of my funny moments come from me being absolutely ridiculous so me and my husband were having a spat he being a delight and a deer was trying to respect my need to never make eye contact because it makes me deeply and horrifically uncomfortable but i'm in an unreasonable fit and so i yell at him across the living room Look at me when I'm talking to you. Oh, no. And he, to wit, he responds, I can't. You hate eye contact. Good for him. And, <laughs> and both of us just start busting out laughing. It was the most absurd thing. Like, I was genuinely righteously angry. And now all of a sudden, I am crying. I am laughing so hard. And I don't remember what I was mad about. Like... It's ridiculous. So now, years later, every time, especially me, but whenever either of us are being absolutely absurd, the other person will yell out, look at me when I'm talking to you, but don't make eye contact. Good. (laughs) (laughs) Because, yeah. And uh, that's how you turn an intrusive thought into a fun, wholesome story. (laughs) 
good. <laughs> good though. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 my he's my rock. He's a very logical, straightforward, consistent person, and I'm a very emotional, all over the place, inconsistent person, and we work so good. <laughs> Well, thank you for being on the show and for telling me a story and for making me laugh and for hurting my feelings. Thank you for all of that. <laughs> thank you for letting me. <laughs> uh, everybody go down to the show notes, click the link, subscribe, and I will see you on the internet. Okay, bye. Bye. Amber, welcome to Hive House that you live in, that is your home. Welcome home. Buzz, buzz, motherfuckers. <laughs> Please say when so I can pick a card. When. What is the best birthday gift you've ever received? Okay, when Christians take sacrament, the body of Jesus is bread or cracker or whatever the hell it is they eat. And the blood is wine or juice or whatever the hell they drink. What would sacrament be if we were taking in your body and your blood? Transubstantiation. Gotta love it. Okay. To hear more of the members only episode, head over to crepuscularconjuration.com. The monthly magic tier will give you access to the monthly magic Marco Polo group, the private Facebook group, and access to the written monthly spells. There's also Crepuscular Conjurations, giving you bonus podcast episodes, coloring pages, guided meditations, spellcrafting videos, printable downloads, and a lot more. The free Witchy Wonderment level will give you a little sample of everything I just mentioned. You can also visit my shop, Clever Kim's Curios, to get spell boxes one at a time or by monthly subscription, intentional handcrafted jewelry that I make especially for witches, and handmade altar tools. You can even listen to the full Your Average Witch podcast library, including show notes and transcripts. Check it out at crepuscularconjuration.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Your Average Witch. You can find us all around the internet on Instagram at Your Average Witch Podcast, Facebook.com slash groups slash Hive House at www.youraveragewitch.com and at your favorite podcast service. If you'd like to recommend someone for the podcast like to be on it yourself, or if you'd like to advertise on the podcast, send an email to youraveragewitchpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next Tuesday.